he transmigrated into the body of a useless prince, becoming a puppet manipulated by the powerful ministers. To escape this tragic fate and return to the modern era, he must pretend to be a pig while eating a tiger, gradually destroying the minister's plans. However, he must also become an incompetent ruler, leading the Daikin dynasty to the path of destruction while ensuring his own survival. The novel belongs to the transmigration, martial arts, and intellectual genres, and especially features many beauties. Please give me a like to support me and let's start reading. At the beginning of the story, a beautiful ancient scene gradually appears. This place is a different world. A Daikin dynasty, an imperial palace. Legend has it that the first emperor Kun Nguyen Emperor Du Thien Quan passed away and his fourth son Du Da succeeded. But Du Da was not the crown prince appointed by Du Thien Quan. This person was ignorant, incompetent, and promiscuous, immoral, called trash, but supported the throne because of fraud. Du Da, who was sitting sipping delicious wine, heard this part and his face turned pale. Hmm, he trembled and opened his eyes wide. Just now the useless emperor, Du Da, the voice outside mentioned, was not me. The scene immediately changed, returning to the pivotal moment before, not long ago. He was a modern man with his sister dancing beside him while pointing out the country somewhere, pointing enthusiastically, a large message appeared on the computer screen, if you could go back to ancient times, which dynasty would you most like to travel to, if you could go back to ancient times, where would you like to travel, especially that dynasty, the blood immediately exploded in his body, he quickly typed on the computer, he poured all his thoughts into the reply box, explaining that the host must be out of their mind, did they think ancient times were some kind of bargain sale with a 40% discount? Were there beautiful dancing girls waiting for them? Time travel was a dangerous gamble, and there was no guarantee they would become an emperor with a harem of 3,000 beauties, they should be grateful to be living in this era. Unexpectedly, after he sent the reply, he found himself in some distant dynasty. Was this a joke? He had just called time travel stupid, and now the system had sent him to this crappy Daikin dynasty even giving him such a ridiculous opening setting. Before he could finish cursing, the system bracelet on his wrist rang again, and the voice of the system spoke. The runaway country system has been activated. It began to chatter non-stop, greetings, host, I am your AI system assistant, the runaway bracelet, you can call me Daibon. Dumbfounded, he felt his anger rising like thunder, his face twisted as he cursed this damn thing in his heart. What the hell was Daibon? And what was this runaway country crap? Was this thing messing with him? Dai Bon ignored Du Da's uncontrolled words, its voice still sounding steady. This system was created from your wish, host, to put it simply, as long as you cause the Daikin dynasty to perish, you can return to reality, so cheer up, I will support you wholeheartedly. Seeing Du Da sitting there in a daze for a while, staring at the bracelet, the girl beside him frowned in confusion. Why did this worthless prince Duda suddenly become so dazed? Who knew that Duda's heart was already in turmoil? Could he really return to reality by making the Ken dynasty perish? This was the first time he had heard of such a strange setting. The girl had no idea what he was thinking. She still stared at Duda with suspicion. In the past, he would always show a vulgar smile when he saw her. Today, she felt that something was wrong. Only then did Duda startle out of his confused thoughts. He looked beside him and saw a beautiful woman still staring at him. He cursed again in his heart. What the hell is this? A character summary panel appeared, showing True Moy, the adopted daughter of True Track. True Track had given her to Du Da as a concubine in the harem in order to monitor him more easily. In addition to these lines, there was also a hexagonal diagram showing her ability level. Authority 32, Rebellion 45, Charm 90, Conquest 35. Martial Arts 44, Scheming 71. Why could he see her stats and information? It was like playing a game. Dai Bon's voice slowly sounded again, as if it could see through all the doubts in Duda's heart. This is the heartwarming support function that Dai Bon gives to the host. As long as they are important figures related to the goal of national destruction, the host can obtain their information and data at any time. Knowing the enemy and knowing yourself will ensure victory in every battle. True Moy suddenly froze her eyes widening in wonder. Did she just see something beautiful and magical? Was it just an illusion? Just a moment ago, she seemed to see a flash of light in his majesty's eyes as he looked at her. However, while she was lost in her imagination, Duda was actually examining her with a thoughtful look, wondering about her identity. So, this beautiful sister was sent by True Track to monitor me. 
My charm is really high. When True Moy saw Duda's eyes that seemed to want to devour her, her heart thundered with unease. It seemed like His Highness had seen through her acting skills that she was so proud of. Suddenly, someone walked into the hall from outside. A man in white robes respectfully approached Duda and said, Your Majesty, I noticed that you seemed to be lost in thought just now. Is there something on your mind? Duda stared at the two people standing below him. They looked respectable and had some aura. But the system had already warned him. These two were probably the treacherous officials mentioned at the beginning. He could also see their information. The man in white who had just spoken was Li Thien Nguyen, the right chancellor of the Kan dynasty and True Track's brother. He saw Du Da as a puppet that he could control and plotted to support Du Da to ascend the throne as the Kan emperor. His personality stats were Authority 94, Rebellion 76, Charm 65, Scheming 90, Martial Arts 51, and Conquest 41. The other person was True Track, the left chancellor of the Kan dynasty and Li Thien Nguyen's brother. He also saw Du Da as a puppet that he could control and plotted to assist Du Da to ascend the throne as the Kan Emperor. His personality stats were Authority 82, Rebellion 100, Charm 70, Scheming 79, Martial Arts 66, and Conquest 65. Du Da's face darkened slightly after reading the two stat sheets. Li Thien Nguyen's authority and scheming stats were incredibly high. True Track's stats were slightly lower. But he was still well rounded in his abilities. Meanwhile, True Moy, standing beside him, was still preoccupied by the strangeness of Duda's earlier gaze. It was the first time she had seen him with such a cold expression, both terrifying and strangely exciting. True Track spoke up, a smile playing on his lips as he jokingly addressed Li Thien Nguyen, Old Li. Perhaps His Majesty worries he won't be able to secure his position on the throne. Duda composed himself and took a sip of wine before replying. No, I yearn for the day I can't hold onto the throne anymore, so I can hasten the kingdom's downfall, True Moy, observing him subtly, noted how he revealed no emotion in response to his foster father's disrespectful provocation, His Highness's true feelings had become increasingly enigmatic. True Track ignored Duda's previous words and continued speaking, after all, the edict before the late emperor passed away was to let the crown prince, Du Tu, who is leading the troops outside, succeed to the throne. Only now did Duda understand a few things. So the crown prince appointed by the previous emperor was due to. It seemed that he was not in the imperial capital at the moment, but leading troops outside. Seeing that Duda did not say anything, True Track thought that he was tacitly agreeing. So he continued to speak arrogantly as before. Now we are going against the edict and preparing to assist your highness in ascending the throne. Duda felt even more certain in his heart. No wonder these two dared to stay in the imperial capital and be so arrogant. True Track chuckled and patted the miniature palace model. He continued to voice his thoughts. Although he wouldn't open the coffin and kill us, it's not certain for Du Tu. He slowly walked towards the dragon throne where Du Da was sitting. Speaking as he walked, after all, the news of the late emperor's death hasn't spread yet. He reached the throne, holding the jade seal in his hands and presenting it to Du Da. His smile twisted as he spoke. The jade seal is now in our hands. How about we strike first and issue an imperial edict? To have due to accompany the late emperor in death. Du Da was somewhat horrified by True Track's barbaric idea. He frowned and stared at him, his heart filled with turmoil. If he followed True Track's plan and issued an edict to kill Du Tu, he would be able to secure his position on the throne. However, not only would he not be able to quickly achieve his goal of destroying the country, he would also become a puppet played by these two old men. The bones of the Daikon emperor were not yet cold, and his two most trusted ministers when he was alive had gone against his will. They plotted to support a useless crown prince to ascend the throne, becoming puppets for them to manipulate the world. Duda knew that since he had transmigrated here, he couldn't just watch a show, he didn't mind not having a sister to admire, but being played by these two old men was unbearable, he didn't want to live like this for even a second. Duda's eyes were filled with confusion. He had only transmigrated here for a short time, and now he had encountered this situation, what should he do? Suddenly, his gaze fell on the shining jade seal. An idea immediately came to him. He snatched the jade seal. If he let them kill him, wouldn't that be the end of it? True Track's eyes widened in fear as he saw Duda snatch the jade seal. Duda, what are you doing? Duda raised the jade seal high, making it look like he was about to smash it on the ground. Who would have thought that Duda's mind was currently filled with a strange thought? 
as long as Duda died. It would be equivalent to the destruction of the Daikon kingdom. Perfect, come on, kill me. True Track had no idea what Duda was thinking. He was more worried about the jade seal in Duda's hand. Duda, what are you trying to do? He shouted. Duda saw that True Track was about to get the jade seal back, so he raised it even higher and taunted him proudly. I am the emperor. I will keep the jade seal. I will decide who lives and who dies. True Moy, standing by the side, was not worried about her father at all. Instead, she found Duda to be extremely handsome. So his highness is a man who dares to confront his foster father like this. She carefully observed Duda's every move, noting who approved and who opposed him. Her heart was filled with new and strange emotions, the most of which was amazement. His words are domineering, his face is expressive, and his body language is full of weight. She couldn't help but marvel how unrestrained a man can be. It turns out that all of his highness's previous useless behaviors were just an act. Seeing Duda confronting his foster father so easily, and even seemingly winning, she suddenly realized that Duda had been acting all along. Now that the jade seal was in his hands, he had finally found the perfect character for his act, on the other hand, her foster father couldn't take it anymore. True track was played around by Duda like a fool since just now, he was already so angry that he stopped and directly scolded Duda. You haven't even ascended to the throne yet, and you're already arrogant. I have the ability to help you ascend to the throne, and I also have the ability to kill you. Duda was not afraid of True Track's threat at all. He even got excited. He picked up the jade seal and smiled crookedly. Then do it, kill me quickly. He had already cursed this old man a lot in his heart. You are just a man with a martial value of 77. Don't disappoint me. True Track, who valued face more than life, couldn't bear to be humiliated like this. He rushed up and roared. All right. Let me strangle you to death. True Moy saw that the situation was critical and rushed forward to pull her foster father back. Foster father, calm down. At this moment, the other guest in the hall spoke up to ease the tension. You two, stop making noise. We all have the same goal. Let's calm down first. Okay. Duda frowned and looked at the man in white who was walking towards him, Li Thien Nguyen. You are also good at being calm. Suddenly, a thought came to his mind and he smiled secretly. He, it seems that I have to add more fuel to the fire. Li Thien Nguyen saw that everyone was silent, so he decided to continue speaking, or else we, unexpectedly, as he turned to Du Da, he saw the jade seal that thousands of people dreamed of being thrown towards him. Li Thien Nguyen's eyes suddenly darkened, he didn't have time to react, and he could only watch helplessly as the national treasure of a country fell to the ground. As it fell, it was accompanied by Du Da's extremely fake oops. Duda saw the two of them stiffen for a moment, then shrugged and calmly said, Sorry, my hand slipped. Talking about this jade seal, it is the symbol of the fortune and power of the Daikan. It is the token for the emperor to command his subjects and rule the world. The one who holds the seal, Kan Kon Du Thien Quan, is now called Kan Nguyen Emperor, which implies that this dynasty can last forever. Breaking the jade seal is a crime punishable by death. Provoking me to this extent, I don't believe you can hold back. Duda secretly rejoiced in his heart and waited for the result. Will you kill me now and let me complete my mission of destroying the country? As expected, True Track was so angry that he turned red. He looked at Duda with terrifying eyes full of murderous intent. You, you. But just as he was about to kill Duda, Li Thien Nguyen stopped him. Your Highness, no, Your Majesty, you are joking. The whole world is yours, let alone a jade seal. Li Thien Nguyen's voice was very calm. This person seemed like nothing could shake him, it's broken, so be it, it's not a big deal, it's getting late. Your majesty should rest early. Let's talk about other things tomorrow. These words made Duda unable to react. Li Thien Nguyen then led True Track out of the hall, leaving Duda standing on the throne, looking at their figures with a reluctant look. Hey, hey. He shouted louder and louder. Isn't it the law that the emperor who commits a crime should be punished like a commoner? Why don't you kill me? But no one answered him. Outside, the sky was clear and the birds were singing merrily as usual. True Track and Li Thien Nguyen left the Ken Palace and returned to their respective residences. Inside, True Track couldn't help but complain. We must find a way to get rid of Du Da. Li Thien Nguyen turned around and said, True Master, do you know the consequences of getting rid of Du Da? True Track roared. What consequences could there be? You are so spineless. You even call a brat your majesty. Li Thien Nguyen had a far-sighted vision, 
he thought to himself. Scolding this true track a hundred times won't make him any smarter, he replied. You are foolish, right now, Crown Prince Du Tu is leading the army outside. If the previous emperor dies mysteriously in the capital, guess who will be the first person Du to blames? Du Da broke the jade seal, which means we lost a bargaining chip against Du Tu. True Track's eyes widened, he couldn't think of this even with a hundred heads. Li Thien Nguyen continued. We can only rely on the one who is about to ascend the throne, so we can't get rid of him yet. True Track gradually understood, but he still had some doubts. Wait, are you saying that Du Da deliberately broke the jade seal to prevent me from killing Du Tu? That's right. Li Thien Nguyen immediately revealed what he knew. Du Tu was originally a stumbling block on Du Da's path to the throne. But when Duda's power grew, he had to reconsider his relationship with Dutu. On the other world continent, the nations fought for hegemony, and countless lives were lost. In the end, the Kan dynasty pacified one region and unified the northern continent. He is a true warrior, apart from Dutu who holds military power. The only person who can make people act cautiously in the court is Duda. If we push Duda too hard, he will let Dutu enter the capital, we will both suffer, and we dare not take that risk. Li Thien Nguyen carefully planned ahead. He didn't forget to point out to True Track, who was confused behind him, that Du Da might even use the relationship between the three parties to control us. He alone would control the three forces. True Track initially found it reasonable. However, when it came to Du Da being able to calculate this much, he found it hard to believe. He sneered and said, Old Li, you are overthinking it. That kid can't possibly be so smart. Li Thien Nguyen said with calm eyes. Do you know who said, the emperor who commits a crime should be punished like a commoner? It was the prime minister of Kan Kingdom and the Vei Hin Luit master a hundred years ago. Recalling the past, back then, Master Vei was highly valued by the king of Kan and promoted the new regime. His power was overwhelming, and he could be called the second most powerful person in the country. But because of that, he lost the trust of the Kan king and was executed by the five chariot. Whenever True Track thought of Duda's face, the anger in his heart rose again. He gritted his teeth and said, I am not some kind of Vei Hin Luit. I will never bow down to that kid. He only relies on Dutu's military power. If he doesn't give the order, I will send someone to kill him myself and then put all the blame on him. The result will be the same. Li Thien Nguyen looked into the distance. He didn't believe that Du Da was a brainless person. He chose to support Du Da before because he was the easiest to control among the many descendants of the previous emperor. However, it seems that now, Suddenly, he stopped and smiled evilly. It seemed that he had some other wicked plan in mind. Your majesty, your descendants are really interesting. People are constantly scheming for power, while here, Prince Du Da is sleeping until noon. He suddenly opened his eyes, his bloodshot eyes showing that he didn't sleep well, so boring. I don't feel like eating or playing. I still have to read the memorials, but I don't know any words. This is really a boring era. He was so upset and uncomfortable that he screamed like a madman. I'm going to die without my phone or laptop. In the midst of his boredom madness, he realized that someone had just entered. He looked and saw it was True Moy. She slowly walked into the bedroom, her face flushed red, her weak voice sounded. Your Majesty, I want to sleep with you. Duda's face changed from confusion to fascination. He thought to himself, I take back what I said before. After a spring night with True Moy, Duda no longer felt bored. He couldn't control himself, he couldn't control himself at all. He got out of bed, thinking that if he wanted to complete the mission, he would have to bother True Shu. Duda turned to look at the girl on the bed, he glanced at her and suddenly realized a detail. The hairpin, who would have thought that today it could become the key for Duda to complete the mission of destroying the country and returning to the modern world. Myriad thoughts flashed through his mind, including the idea of using the hairpin to stab someone like in the novels. He poured a cup of wine and called out, True Shu, you are actually the spy that True Track sent to my side, aren't you? True Shu's eyes widened in shock, she was exposed, impossible. She slowly sat up and tried to find an excuse, Your Majesty, what are you talking about? Chu Nhi doesn't understand. Duda still turned his back to her and said, Don't worry, I don't care about you and True Track colluding with each other. After that, he took a big sip of wine turned around and looked straight into True Shu's eyes. He planted you here, isn't it to monitor and control me? How is it? Are you in a hurry now that you've been exposed on the spot? Seeing True Shu's panicked face, Duda became even more amused and continued. 
I enjoy playing this game with him, otherwise, being an emperor would be too boring. True Shu never thought that Du Da would realize it so quickly, father, my foster father to get me by his side, but he just sees it as a game. She slowly stood up without making a sound, he turned his back to her, indicating that he was tired of the game. Her hands clenched into fists. True Shu couldn't wait any longer. Du Da finished a sip of wine and started to exclaim, yawning, this wine is a bit strong. After saying that, he pretended to fall asleep on the table, his heart longing for death to come quickly. Don't say I didn't give you a chance. Hurry up and do it. True Shu took the hairpin from her head and wanted to stab him from behind. Her identity was exposed and she lost her value to her foster father. She slowly approached Du Da. There was only one way to save him. True Shu walked gently. Du Da didn't know what he was dreaming about and laughed a few times. Suddenly, Da Bang's voice sounded. The Vong Kwok system has been updated. Dai Ban will continue to serve the host. This made Du Da unable to pretend to sleep anymore. He raised his head and looked at it. What the hell is a system update? I'm about to complete the mission and return. Your update is meaningless. Dai Ban sounded again. To make the host's goal clearer, this update adds a national PowerPoint system. The system synthesizes the indicators of Ken Kwok in terms of politics, military, economy, and culture. To get national PowerPoints, the host only needs to reduce the national PowerPoints to zero. It is considered as completing the Vong Kwok mission. By the way, the current national PowerPoints are 1000. Du Da's eyes were lost and his heart was full of fear. Wait. Does that mean that even if I'm killed now, as long as the national PowerPoints haven't reached zero, it's still considered a mission failure? Dai Bond kindly explained, with the host's current identity, even death will not reduce the points to zero. Just when Du Da was still scared of the information he had just received, real death was approaching. He was terrified and cursed. Damn you. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Why is my life so worthless? True Shu felt what she needed to do. The emperor was likely testing her again, but she had no way back. She could only gamble. Just as True Shu's hairpin was about to pierce his head, Du Da suddenly turned around and grabbed her hand. He openly hugged her waist. True Shu's eyes widened. She had been fooled by the emperor's acting skills again. Du Da breathed a sigh of relief. It was dangerous. He had almost gone too far. But True Shu didn't give up. She pulled her hand out of Du Da's, raised the hairpin, and thought, I still have a chance, I'll stab him. But she suddenly slipped and fell to the ground. She hated herself and cried terribly. Du Da laughed happily, with a martial value of only 55. It's a bit delusional for you to try to kill someone after failing to steal something. He stepped forward, took the hairpin from True Shu, and said, True Shu, you're too impatient. A few words from me have aroused your killing intent. Du Da lifted True Shu's chin and warned her sternly, you're not a qualified spy. True Shu couldn't hold back her tears and cried pitifully. The assassination had failed. Was she going to die? The scene changed. True Shu was in a dark place. She was panicking. Where was this? Hadn't the emperor killed her? Suddenly, True Track appeared beside her. He called out, Shu Nhi, have you finished what I asked you to do? True Shu was scared and stepped back, foster father. True Track's face suddenly became terrifying. He reached out to her and said, you can't even do this little thing. I have to punish you. A heartbreaking cry rang out in the darkness. No, don't. But when she opened her eyes again, there was no foster father around her. The room was filled with warm light. Duda turned to her and asked, What's wrong? Did you have a nightmare? True Shu blushed with embarrassment. She huddled in the corner of the bed and said, Your Majesty, you wanted to kill me. Duda stood up and stretched. I told you this is just a game. I will not only not kill you, but I will also pretend not to know anything and let you pass on the information. He smiled and said, After all, that will make the game more interesting. Duda took out paper and pen, dipped the brush in ink, and then wrote and wrote on the paper, for example, now, I have to come up with a very interesting imperial edict. True Shu stood by the side and saw Duda's heroic spirit, and she felt a little cold, his majesty showed such a terrifying expression. Her brain kept working, thinking for a moment and then came to a shocking conclusion, he must be preparing to attack his adoptive father again, right? Who knows that on the other side, Duda is not angry because of the evil idea of writing an imperial edict, but is angry because of the brush, damn, it's really hard to write with a brush. After struggling with this mess for a while, he couldn't hold back anymore and sighed a few times. 
Tru Shu looked at him strangely. Did he finish writing, so fast? The next moment, Du Da turned around and smiled awkwardly, calling Tru Shu back. Tru Shu, you write for me. Tru Shu opened her mouth and couldn't help but exclaim. Du Da came over and dragged her back to the table, not letting her refuse. Tru Shu was in chaos. Why did it become like this? Tru Shu had no choice but to accept her fate. She turned around and asked Du Da cautiously, I don't know what your majesty wants to write in the imperial edict. Du Da put his hand on her shoulder, and his deep voice sounded, Write that all descendants of the Du family, including Du Tu, will have their Du surname removed and be demoted to commoners. Tru Shu's cold sweat broke out as she listened. She opened her eyes wide in disbelief. She couldn't understand why his majesty would do such a thing to abandon all his relatives. Tru Shu, wanting to pry more information out of him, slowly spoke up. Your majesty, this humble servant dares to ask one question. Why do you want me to write such an imperial decree? Du Da didn't say anything, he suddenly smiled as if he was thinking of something very funny, he had previously asked the system, and the simplest way to reduce his favorability points at the moment was to weaken the influence of the Du Da royal family. Demoting the descendants of the Du Da family to commoners would not only reduce his favorability points, but also create an image of him as a tyrannical and cruel ruler to the outside world, it was truly perfect. Being able to think of this way is truly an outstanding talent. Duda only remembered after a while that someone was asking him something, he turned to look at Tru Shu and said, You ask me why? Tru Shu had seen Duda's terrifying appearance from beginning to end, so when he turned to look at her, she immediately lowered her head in fear. This servant has spoken too much. Please forgive me, your majesty. Duda ignored her again and smiled, of course it's to increase the difficulty of the game. He reached out and cupped Tru Shu's cheek, looking at her affectionately, with this imperial decree, I will not only become a lonely person who has lost the support of my family, but also be labeled as a cold-blooded tyrant. Du Da's voice was calm as he said, I'm letting you write the imperial decree, you should tell Tru Track this good news, he must be very happy. Consider this a gift from me. Tru Shu was puzzled by his words, a gift for me, I've never received a gift in my life. Du Da enjoyed watching the changing expressions on Tru Shu's face. You must not let me down. Tru Shu had already let go of her fear, but her heart was still in turmoil. She knew that his majesty was deceiving her, but why was she so happy? A while later, Tru Shu arrived at Tru Track's residence to find her adoptive father. She knocked on the door for a while before someone came out to open it. Tru Track frowned when he saw her. Why did you come so late? Tru Shu entered and reported. Zuer came here this time with important intelligence. She honestly told them everything that had happened. His Majesty, no, Du Da has issued an imperial decree to demote all the members of the Du Da royal family to commoners. True Track was thunderstruck. He exclaimed, What? What? Even the usually calm Li Thien Nguyen was shocked. True Track looked at Li Thien Nguyen anxiously for a solution. Old Li, you just made plans to establish a new emperor from among the Du Da descendants. That kid is obviously targeting us. Li Thien Nguyen paused for a moment before speaking. Such important intelligence. How do you know it? Is it reliable? Tru Shu was a little embarrassed when she was asked. She stammered. That. His Majesty wants me to write the Imperial Decree myself. To her surprise. Tru Track was even more surprised than before when she said this. He stepped forward and slapped her mercilessly. You slut. Tru Shu fell to the ground hard after being hit. True Track continued to curse. Did you reveal our secret? True Shu held her cheek in pain. Her cheek was already red and swollen, but she still answered politely, No, adoptive father. Unexpectedly, her words meant nothing to True Track. He shouted, Don't play with me. If you didn't tell that white-faced boy to help him deal with us, why would he let you write the imperial decree? Seeing that True Track was about to hit Shu again, Li Thien Nguyen stepped forward and patted him on the shoulder. Lord True, calm down. If True Shu had leaked the information, how could the news of the Imperial Decree have been leaked? This is Duda's plan to sow discord and remind us not to act rashly to establish a new emperor. True Track gritted his teeth in anger but still listened to Li Thien Nguyen. He stepped forward and helped True Shu up with a gentle expression. He said happily, True Zuer, I just wronged you. You won't blame me, right? True Shu didn't dare to talk back to her adoptive father even though she was in pain. She could only follow along, Shu Nhi doesn't dare. Having successfully dealt with True Shu, 
True Track turned to Li Thien Nguyen and asked for his opinion on the next step. Old Li. It seems that your plan to install a new king is no longer relevant. True Track sneered and said, Just watch my plan unfold. I will mobilize the court officials and humiliate him on his first day of court. I will let him know who has the real power here. Li Thien Nguyen frowned slightly. He wanted to offer some advice, but hesitated and sighed. Forget it. Do as you please. Looking at True Track's back, Li Thien Nguyen secretly calculated in his heart. True Track is not someone who can accomplish great things. I should also have my own plan. Time passed, and it was now dusk. Du Da was sitting at his desk, reading something. He looked at the memorials but his mind was on other things. The edict was already prepared. He was just waiting for the right opportunity to issue it. However, it was still far from the time when his points would reach zero. He pondered, resting his chin on his hand and contemplating, thinking carefully, there must be many other ways to reduce national strength points. After a while of brainstorming, Duda's eyes suddenly lit up. That's right, the tyrant kings in history, besides their trusted, treacherous officials, also ignored the government, forced women into marriage, and filled their harems. He had never been so excited, as if he had found a treasure, he would do just that, while the bones of the previous emperor were still cold. He would issue an edict to force the female relatives of all the court officials into the palace to serve him. This would definitely break their hearts. Suddenly, his creepy laughter rang out, causing the courtiers to shiver. Duda was still immersed in his own thoughts, thinking that this way he could not only reduce a large amount of points, but also gain some benefits for himself. He was really clever to come up with such a flirtatious trick. Without hesitation, Duda turned to his eunuch and said, I want to summon True Track and Li Thien Nguyen. Let them come to the imperial study immediately. The eunuch, who was still lost in thought, was called out and immediately responded, Yes, your majesty. Soon after, True Track and Li Thien Nguyen arrived at the imperial study as Duda wished. As they entered, they heard Duda's joyful voice saying, Dear two officials, please sit down and make yourselves at home. True Track still had his usual grumpy face towards Duda, while Li Thien Nguyen, knowing his place, bowed respectfully to Duda and said, Thank you, your majesty. True track, as soon as he sat down, quickly spoke up, Your majesty, you have already ascended to the throne, shouldn't you hold court tomorrow to get acquainted with your courtiers? He had his own thoughts and laughed secretly in his heart, HMPH, I will go and negotiate with the important officials of the true faction in the court later, tomorrow, we must definitely join forces to embarrass you. Duda's thoughts were the opposite of theirs, he would not hold court for a long time. He thought that diligently handling court affairs was like a task to increase his favor points. He would be stupid to hold court as soon as he ascended to the throne. Duda felt indifferent to True Track's provocative words. He raised his head and took a sip of wine, then replied, Holding court is too troublesome. I have just ascended to the throne and have no experience yet. Anyway, I trust you too. Please continue to help me handle my work. Li Thien Nguyen silently observed the situation. He couldn't help but sigh, as expected. His Majesty rejected True Track's request for him to hold court. It seemed that these people thought too highly of Duda. Not only did he guess that True Track wanted to suppress him in the court, but he also gave the reason of trusting his subjects, making it impossible for others to refute him. Li Thien Nguyen's eyes intently studied the young man above. He completely despised True Track's petty tricks. Duda saw that the two people below were no longer talking so he knew it was time to launch his plan to reduce favor points by recruiting concubines. Duda took a deep breath and spoke in a low voice, ahem. Let's not talk about holding court for now. Actually, I called you two here today because I have something to discuss. Duda put on a perverted and lustful expression and said, I am the emperor now, and the harem only has true shoe. It's a bit embarrassing. I have decided to look for beauties and recruit them into the harem. No matter how true track calculated, he could not have predicted this move by Du Da. The former emperor had just been buried, and he already wanted to think about the affairs of his lower body, he had never seen such a shameless person before. Li Thien Nguyen also couldn't believe it, he deliberately summoned them to meet, but the matter to be discussed was not related to national affairs. What kind of trick was this recruiting of concubines? Du Da continued to act, saying, that's right, this matter must be done quickly. Duda was really happy both on the outside and inside, he quickly reduced the national strength points to zero. The two people below were speechless and could not even say a word of exclamation. 
True track, feeling helpless, had to speak up and resolve the situation, Your Majesty, if you want us to search for beautiful women in the world, I support you, however, time is of the essence. Duda continued to exaggerate his acting skills, I understand, in such a short time, it is impossible to find beauties in the world, so, let's just search within the capital. True Trax secretly despised him in his heart, he couldn't wait any longer, ha. Huh? He turned to look at Li Thien Nguyen's serious face and prayed in his heart, Li Thien Nguyen, don't let his majesty use the matter of finding beauties to trick you, he just mentioned the capital, I'm afraid that's the key. Duda didn't give them time to think deeply, he spoke again, I've thought of a way to save time and effort. After that, a series of words came out of Duda's mouth, each word full of provocation, we can choose from the female relatives of the court officials. After finishing the important matter, Duda did not keep the two of them any longer, and they both retreated, outside, True Track chased after Thien Nguyen and said, Duda doesn't care about the court and still recruits concubines, this is clearly the rhythm of a tyrant. True Track kept talking, however, this kid is looking for his own death from the position of emperor, which also saves us a lot of effort. Li Thien Nguyen hadn't said anything since just now, as if he was having a heavy heart, True Track kept chattering, he was so angry that he turned around and shouted, enough. Li Thien Nguyen's face twisted and he said, if you continue to underestimate his majesty, then the end of waiting for us is the extermination of our nine clans. True Track was shocked by his words. After a while, Li Thien Nguyen's outburst left True Track speechless. After a moment, Li Thien Nguyen realized he had overstepped and quickly apologized. My apologies, Lord True, I spoke out of turn earlier, however, I believe His Majesty's actions, despite their outward appearance, are actually intricate strategies with deeper meaning, True Track replied, high-level strategies, why can't I see it? Li Thien Nguyen regained his composure and replied, you just made a plan to humiliate him in court, but he easily dismissed it, this shows that he knows our intentions like the back of his hand. True Track hurriedly asked, but that plan was just decided, and we were summoned to the palace, there is no way the news could have leaked out. Li Thien Nguyen, of course, knew this, he spoke with a deep voice, this proves that he had already calculated this in advance, this is what is truly terrifying, not only that, but he has also been recruiting new concubines for the harem. These actions seem like debauchery, but they are actually aimed at us, they are all part of a grand scheme. True track followed behind Li Thien Nguyen, still not understanding what was going on and what Chainlink plan meant. Li Thien Nguyen walked away without looking back, he said, that bastard doesn't need to work because he is confident that he can control the country even without working. By taking the female family members of the court officials into his harem, he can directly win over the officials through marriage and undermine our influence in the court. True Track finally understood, he panicked and said, then, then what should we do? Li Thien Nguyen turned his face to the darkness, he smiled strangely and said in a low voice, what else can we do? He is the emperor now, he needs to pass on the bloodline of the imperial family, expanding the harem is natural thing to do. He turned around again, his sinister smile fully revealed, and said with hidden meaning, we are his subjects, of course we also have to satisfy him. A few days later, in the palace of the imperial Fu Vong, Li Thien Nguyen followed behind the bastard to report, Your Majesty, a few days ago, I followed your orders and demoted all the descendants of the imperial family to commoners, only the eldest prince, Du Tu, is still stationed outside, so the imperial decree has not yet been delivered. Du Da waved his hand impatiently before he could finish speaking, those things are not important, we'll talk about them later. Then, he changed his expression and became extremely cunning. I asked you before, how did you choose the concubines for the harem? Li Thien Nguyen found it difficult to answer this question. He coughed and respectfully reported. Fortunately, I have not lived up to my responsibilities. It's just that the time is too tight, so I ask your majesty to forgive me. Then, he stood up straight, clapped his hands a few times, and ordered, Come out, all of you, let his majesty see. Duda's originally dark eyes suddenly became extremely bright, and his face also flushed. Walking in were countless beautiful women from all over the world, each with a different beauty. Duda looked at them fascinated ly, even drooling, and said excitedly, this, this is the paradise, right? Immediately afterwards, all the girls shouted in unison, servants pay homage to your majesty, the bastard laughed obscenely and said, ahem, rise. 
He jumped to Li Thien Nguyen's side, leaned close to his shoulder and whispered, Li, among the beauties you recruited for the harem this time, are there any who are particularly scheming? Li Thien Nguyen didn't have any interest in beauty, he frowned and told the truth, Your Majesty, I don't understand what you mean by, scheming. Du Da's interest was completely extinguished by Li Thien Nguyen's words. He pouted unhappily, this old man Li Thien Nguyen was pretending to be dignified. Even if he had never heard of scheming before, as a man, combined with the context above and below, couldn't he understand the meaning of it? Seeing that the bastard was silent for a long time without saying anything, Li Thien Nguyen started to sweat in his heart, was the bastard suspicious. However, he was still very hesitant. Most of the concubines this time were selected from the female family members of nobles without great power. On the surface, it was reasonable and there was no problem. There were only two women. They were Pham Dao Chu and Jia Katsa. More than ten years ago, the two powerful families of the Great Khan, the Fan family and the Jia Katsa family, were beheaded for angering the previous emperor. He recalled the distant past. At that time, he was in charge of the execution and was full of enthusiasm. He secretly saved the two children. Day after day, for the past ten years, he has hidden their identities and raised them by his side. Unexpectedly, they both inherited the talents of their families and became important pawns in his hands. Recalling the night before, Li Thien Nguyen called the two of them to discuss an important matter. A Chu, a Sa, the great Khan emperor who killed your family is dead. He knows what these two children are like, so he makes full use of their thoughts to incite them. But you can't personally take revenge. Are you willing? He began to say every word. Every word of manipulation. Now there is a chance to destroy the map in front of you. But this is extremely dangerous. The new emperor not only has deep thoughts but also still wild and tyrannical. Even more terrible than the heavenly king. One of the two of them immediately spoke up. As long as they can take revenge. Will a Chu die? Words. The other person also quickly declared out of hatred that a Sa had had the enlightenment to sacrifice himself a long time ago. Li Thien Nguyen chuckled. He had indeed calculated this result. It was almost the same. Just in time to borrow this concubine selection. Arrange these two people next to him. Ensuring that I would not know the devil. Returning to reality. Du Da suddenly walked with star-shaped eyes in front of the two girls and shouted. These two sisters. Without a doubt. Du Da is paying attention to a Chu and a Sa who were planted by Li Thien Nguyen in the concubine selection lineup. Li Thien Nguyen felt a sudden pang of guilt when he saw Du Da staring at the two women he had planted. Ah, they've been noticed. However, that wasn't the case. Du Da was actually looking at the summary of their backgrounds. A Chu, with 32 in martial arts, 96 in bone manipulation, 83 in throat manipulation, 35 in conquest, 20 in bravery, and 90 in scheming. Jia Kat Sa is the daughter of Jia Kat Thien Fuang Grand Astrologer from the Kan Nguyen Emperor's era. She is the only survivor of Jia Kat Jia the family after the Kan Nguyen Emperor massacred them. She was raised by Li Thien Nguyen and is approaching the host to avenge her family's extermination. The other person is Pham Dao Chu, the granddaughter of wealthy merchant Pham Tuyet Nam from the Kan Nguyen Emperor's era. She is the only survivor of the Pham family after the Kan Nguyen Emperor massacred them. She was raised by Li Thien Nguyen and is approaching the host to avenge her family's extermination. Her combat stats are 37 in martial arts, 95 in bone manipulation, 96 in scheming, 26 in throat manipulation, 66 in conquest, and 82 in bravery. After reading the information, Du Da understood the enemy and his own side. He sneered. So these two sisters are the spies that Li Thien Nguyen planted here. Excellent. Such venomous beauties who can cause chaos in the harem are just perfect for a ruler who will bring about the downfall of the country. After thinking it through, Duda continued to play his role. He leaned closer to the two women and asked, Your qualities are not bad. What are your names? A Chu spoke first, Your Majesty. My name is A Chu. A Sa followed, her voice slightly trembling. I am A Sa. Duda heard the trembling in A Sa's voice and immediately wanted to tease her. He leaned closer and asked, Miss A Saw, you seem very nervous. Li Thien Nguyen was so anxious that he couldn't help but tremble. He thought to himself, oh no, A Saw is an introvert, under Du Da's pressure, she's very likely to show a weakness. When Du Da saw that A Saw didn't say anything after he asked her several times, he became a little impatient. He immediately lifted A Saw's chin and said, don't be afraid, I'm actually very approachable. He felt that A Saw wouldn't resist no matter what he did so he casually caressed her chin. 
Asa's heart was in a mess. She felt a sense of danger and thought to herself, I can't take it anymore. Suddenly, the system sounded an alarm. Jia Kat Sa has an unknown hidden attribute that has not been recorded in the system. Under a state of tension, if she is touched by someone of the opposite sex on sensitive parts of her body, including but not limited to the chin, she will faint due to embarrassment. Everyone was shocked to see a saw suddenly faint to the ground. This is bad, Duda thought. Duda's face darkened. He looked at the woman lying on the ground with tears streaming down her face. He was supposed to show her favor to appease Li Thien Nguyen, but he didn't expect Jia Kat Sa to be so weak, she had ruined his performance. Duda glanced at Li Thien Nguyen in the distance. He felt uneasy, Li Thien Nguyen would be afraid that her identity would be exposed and would definitely find an excuse to take her back. Sure enough, Li Thien Nguyen suddenly knelt down and bowed his head deeply. Your Majesty, I was negligent in my supervision and chose the wrong person. This woman has been disrespectful to your majesty. I deserve to die. I will take her back. But Duda interrupted him. No need, he said. He had already come up with a plan in his mind. The only option now was to continue the act. Duda bent down and picked up the unconscious Asa. He didn't forget to act like a lecherous ruler. I like this kind of woman who can't take a little teasing. Li, you've chosen well. A Chu cursed in her heart. This ruler is really a pervert. Li Thien Nguyen didn't suspect anything. He wiped the sweat off his face and said, Thank you, your majesty. Duda put on a lecherous smile and announced to everyone, I've decided. A saw will serve me tonight. A Chu cursed again. Ruler, I'll kill you sooner or later. As Duda was about to leave, he suddenly looked down at a Chu who was kneeling beside him. He caught a glimpse of her hatred and wondered, Why are you looking at me with such dissatisfaction? Could it be? He was indeed shameless. He smiled and said, Do you want to join me, Miss A Chu? How about we play a game of landlord with three people tonight? A Chu was momentarily stunned by the fearfulness of the man in front of her. What? In the morning of that same day, Duda actually took Asa and A Chu back to his palace. Duda looked at the curtain, looked at the two women in it, and couldn't help but admire himself. In this beautiful harem tonight, these two ladies were indeed the most dignified. Duda looked at the two people lying on the bed. A Chu was staring at him indignantly. But Duda didn't pay attention to her. He was thinking. The system showed that they were approaching him to destroy the country. So he could take advantage of them. Use this point. He remembered Li Thien Nguyen in the morning. He must have had this idea for a long time. After all. He could let Li Thien Nguyen secretly raise him and even deliberately give it to him. They were definitely better than others. But he was also a little frustrated. Unfortunately. The system only displays basic ability stats and documents. I don't know what kind of harmful skills the two of them have. A Chu looked at Duda standing still in one place until now. His facial expression did not change at all. As if frozen, she couldn't help but frown and wonder. What was that guy thinking? She looked at a saw who had just woken up and was still lying next to her and thought. We clearly have the enlightenment to dedicate ourselves. She and a saw had already imagined all kinds of humiliation and shameless torture from the bastards and they would be subjected to all kinds of tactics to humiliate and coerce us. Subdued under his promiscuity, now it seems. A Chu focused her eyes on the guy. For some reason, in her eyes, he still couldn't look gentle and kind. But the guy who did nothing seemed even scarier. Suddenly, A Chu remembered something. When Li Thien Nguyen brought them here, he had deliberately instructed them. Last night, Li Thien Nguyen personally instructed the two of you. Don't worry about your background. I have forged it already making sure he won't find out. However, this Duda is deep-minded. Although he is lustful, he is not easily seduced by beauty. Li Thien Nguyen's face became more tense as he spoke, and his voice became more vigilant. Moreover, True Track has already given him a million Chu in advance. She is both your ally and your competitor. Remember every word I say. You must gain Duda's trust and show him your value beyond your appearance. I believe you know how to show your worth. While they were still recalling Li Thien Nguyen's words, they were suddenly called back by Du Da. What are you two thinking about? Why are you so absent-minded? He continued. I just asked you. What are your talents and skills? Both of them had the same thought at the same time, as expected. Asa answered first. This slave has a knack for divination, observing stars, and guessing words. Witchcraft, geomancy, nutrition, medicine, alchemy, Duda couldn't stop laughing after hearing a series of information from Asa's mouth. This talent is good. This is the real strength of the daughter of the great priest, right? 
Finally, she whispered softly, and also bedchamber arts, a chew. Hearing the last sentence, secretly despised her a little. With a body that loses control after being touched by a man, she still dared to claim she knew bedchamber arts. Duda pondered for a moment, without showing any emotion on his face. Then he turned to ask a chew. What about you, miss? A chew observed Duda for a few seconds and concluded. Judging from that tyrant's expression, he doesn't seem satisfied with Sister Saw's answer. I come from a merchant family, in her memory, she had been following her grandfather to various trading places since she was a child. Gradually, she not only developed a talent for calculating goods, but also for calculating people's hearts. However, her grandfather's misfortune made her realize that with these two skills, it would be easy for her to be suspected by those in power. At that moment, a Chu was calculating in her heart. The premise of revenge was to protect herself first, while at the same time showing her value and disguising herself as a harmless figure. After thinking it through, a Chu began to play dumb. I am a weak woman. What talents and skills could I have? She thought to herself, she could never reveal her talents in calculating goods and understanding people's hearts. She shyly brushed her bangs aside, her beauty captivating. Although I come from a noble family, my parents have passed away, and the only thing I have left is a fortune. She smiled to herself, thinking, what could be more perfect than a weak and helpless woman with a fortune? Duda could only gasp in admiration, your parents are gone, but you still have a fortune, you're like a Batman from another world. After calming down, he thought to himself, if that's the case, then these two ladies can contribute to the great cause of destroying the country. Duda spoke up, I am the king of a country, how can I be interested in your wealth, Miss Chu? He continued, on the contrary, are you willing to manage the national treasury for me? A Chu repeated, national, treasury. Her face turned pale and she cried out, what? Duda happily calculated in his heart. Fam Dao Chu came from a merchant family, so she must be very good at falsifying accounts and embezzling public funds. The task of emptying the national treasury and collapsing the economy would be entrusted to her. Having dealt with one person, Duda turned to a saw and ordered, as for Jia Kat Saw, who comes from a family of Taoist priests, hmm, being obsessed with cultivating and refining pills is the standard behavior of a tyrant in history. Miss A Saw, since you are so talented, I will appoint you as the national master, you will also be in charge of the imperial hospital and be responsible for refining pills to prolong my life. Jia Kat Saw was also shocked and let out a surprised gasp. Who would have known that Duda actually enjoyed things that could potentially kill him? Doctor, take the medicine. The task of ruining my health is now entrusted to Miss A Saw. He suddenly snapped his fingers, as if he had a breakthrough idea, that's right, I almost forgot something important, if a saw is going to be the national master. He snapped his fingers again, from now on, you will wear a me robe when you meet me, it will be fun to cosplay. Jia Kat Saw's clothes were soaked with sweat, she looked at Duda's inexplicably happy expression and felt terrified. Duda, on the other hand, was quite proud of his new idea, if they were going to cosplay, they might as well go all out. It would be quite entertaining to have the harem regularly cosplay. In the True Track study, the night was silent but the place was still lit up. True Track sat at his desk, writing something, the old man snickered as he wrote, then picked up the prepared imperial seal to stamp it. That brat didn't want to issue this decree, so he would do it himself, with something like the imperial seal, he could make as many as he wanted. After finishing everything, he wrapped up the fake decree, his smile becoming more and more inhuman. His mind was filled with vicious thoughts, due to, although good at leading troops, was at his weakest when it came to blind loyalty. Even if the decree wanted him to commit suicide immediately, he would do it without hesitation, as long as Duda was eliminated. Duda would have no reinforcements, then he will be under my control. After calculating everything perfectly, he immediately called for someone, come in. Immediately, someone stepped in from outside. It was True Track's general, True Tin. He bowed respectfully as soon as he entered. Master, please give your orders. True Track handed him a box, which contained the fake decree. He ordered, you will immediately go to the northern district of Lam Dong City and deliver this decree to the commander of the northern army, Du Tu. Speaking of this, the old man's smile was extremely ferocious, and just looking at it was terrifying. He growled with a mixture of laughter. You must see Du to commit suicide with your own eyes, and then bring his head back. I must offer a congratulatory gift to his majesty. True Tin didn't say anything, he nodded and accepted the order, 
Yes, sir. Outside, the leaves rustled, on True Track's roof. A black-clothed figure had heard the entire conversation. He handed a scroll of secret information to a pigeon, urging it to notify Lord Kiyu immediately. The pigeon flew silently into the night, carrying the secret message to a distant location without anyone's knowledge. On the same night, far away, a military commander was leading his troops on a march. No one noticed that on a tall tree, a group of people were silently observing their every move. The black-clothed figure seemed to be a woman wearing a butterfly mask, she gave the order, prepare, the next moment, she slipped and fell from the branch, to the surprise of her two companions. She was also a woman, and she screamed in surprise, ah! Before falling straight into the bushes, another black-clothed figure on the tree looked down and said with sweat, Lord Ung's passive skill, myriad forms, has been activated again. The other person said helplessly, let's go, we're used to it. The person called Lord Ung fell to the ground and angrily said to the other two, what are you standing there for, take action quickly. At the same time, the commander of the army was riding his horse at a fast pace when he noticed something unusual. A rope suddenly appeared across the path on the ground, and he immediately stopped his horse with a neigh. But it was too late, the soldiers behind didn't have time to react and collided with each other, creating a chaotic scene. To make matters worse, as soon as they touched the ground, they triggered the bombs, which exploded everywhere, causing everyone to scatter and flee. At this moment, a group of black-clothed figures jumped down from the high branches of the trees to engage in battle, they covered their faces and started swinging their swords, while shooting arrows from below to kill the enemy. The commander originally wanted to take a different route, but a black-clothed figure blocked his way. Lord Kiyu has said that we cannot let any of them go, stop him. It turned out that the commander was true tin, he roared angrily, you rebels dare to block the imperial decree. As soon as he finished shouting, he quickly charged on horseback, swinging his sword at the black-clothed figures, the sword and saber danced, killing a few ignorant men. But at this moment, a figure also jumped down from above, his voice cold as ice, the ignorant one is you. True Tin clearly saw the black-clothed figure in front of him, but the next second, he had a sword at his throat. True Tin glanced back and growled, you are the Cone Vey, the next second, the dagger pierced his throat, and blood spattered everywhere. One of the black-clothed figures took the box containing the fake decree and brought it to the female assassin, Lord Kiyu. She slowly opened the box and saw the decree inside. Lord Kiyu took off her hood, her eyes filled with hatred, as expected, that tyrant wants due to the crown prince to commit suicide. The black-clothed man thought for a moment, then said, Lord Kiyu, if it is his majesty's decree, then aren't we, the Cone Vey, overstepping our authority by acting tonight? The next moment, a sword flashed past his face, Lord Kiyu's sharp gaze warning him, after only a few days of peace, you have forgotten the original oath of the Cone Vey. We, the Cone Vey, act in the dark to protect the previous emperor, Emperor Kan Nguyen. We can act ruthlessly and use bloody, but we must not forget that our loyal target is the previous emperor. Lord Kiyu clenched the fake decree in her hand, her voice filled with determination, when the previous emperor was alive. He established due to as the crown prince, now that the previous emperor has passed away, we must naturally follow his will and support due to. Her hands soon crushed the fake decree, her anger and hatred reaching their limits. Not only has Du Da usurped the throne, but he also wants to harm the crown prince. The black clothed man didn't dare to breathe as he watched the pieces of paper fly in the air. Lord Kiyu continued, then he is the enemy that we, the Kone Vey, must eliminate. She then ordered all of her soldiers, clean this place up thoroughly and don't let anyone know about it. The black-clothed figures responded in unison, understood. Lord Kiyu mentally calculated, Crown Prince Du Tu is in the northern region, it will take him at least four days to return to the capital. Even if he doesn't stop, she looked into the distance and spoke to the wind and clouds, in those four days, Du Da will not discover anything unusual about the decree. She slowly pulled down her mask, revealing her entire face, before that, I must kill him with my own hands. The words Duda she spoke carried a heavy deathly aura, on the other side, Duda suddenly sneezed for no reason. He rubbed his nose a few times before opening his mouth and saying, Is there another beautiful woman thinking about me? The two people playing cards, a Chu and a Sa, also turned to look at him in confusion. Five days later, True Track's mansion, True Track paced back and forth in his mansion 
Unable to sit still, he stared out the door, waiting for news. That idiot True Tin, it's been five days already, and there's no news at all. At this moment, Li Thien Nguyen entered from outside and asked, Master True, what are you waiting for? True Track was startled and exclaimed, Li Thien Nguyen. True Track stammered, No, I'm not waiting for anything. What are you doing here so late? Li Thien Nguyen then remembered his purpose. He smiled and raised his hand, saying, I'm here to bring you good news, Master True, he added, and also some bad news. True Track opened his eyes wide with curiosity and asked, What bad news could there be? Li Thien Nguyen smirked. Then his face changed into a contemptuous expression as he announced, Your plan to fake the imperial decree and kill Duda has failed. True Track's eyes widened in disbelief. He angrily rushed over and grabbed Li Thien Nguyen by the collar, shouting, You're talking nonsense. Li Thien Nguyen pushed him away and said, Master True, we're on the same side, you don't need to deny it. Li Thien Nguyen then began to explain the whole story to True Track. True Tin had been killed outside the city five days ago, and the one who did it was the leader of the Kone Vei, Kiyu. True Track was once again shocked. Kiyu, the Kone Vei, the shadow army directly controlled by the previous emperor. Why would they? Li Thien Nguyen suddenly burst out laughing and said, Let's not talk about this for now. Master True should continue listening to the good news. Li Thien Nguyen continued. Although Kiyu killed True Tin, she mistakenly thought that the decree was issued by Du Da, her next target is Du Da. True Track started to laugh as soon as he heard half of it, he laughed and said, Good, good, so great, very suitable for my intentions. True Track saw Li Thien Nguyen about to leave and called out to him, Wait a minute, the Canvay has always been a lone wolf, how did you know about such a secret matter? Li Thien Nguyen turned around, revealing a hidden depth as he replied to True Track, I have my own ways, Lord True doesn't need to worry about it. After finishing speaking, he looked out at the dark sky, vast and unfathomable for thousands of miles, and said, Lord True's luck this time is not bad, it can also be said that it is a blessing in disguise. We can take this opportunity to break the balance that His Majesty has created between Du Tu, you, and me. In the night wind, Li Thien Nguyen's voice echoed, Tonight, his Majesty is holding a harem banquet in the Can Nguyen Palace, there will be many people. According to my calculations, if Kiyu wants to make a move against His Majesty, tonight will be the best opportunity. Indeed, there was already movement in the Can Nguyen Palace. Kiyu seemed to be wearing a black cloak and had come alone to the bedroom where Du Da was resting in the middle of the night, therefore, I will intervene a little to make the Imperial Guard relax their vigilance tonight. Li Thien Nguyen's voice continued to sound evenly, word by word, right now. The convey represents Du Tu, so whether the assassination succeeds or fails, Du Tu will bear the infamy of regicide. The more Li Thien Nguyen spoke, the more obvious the smile on his face became. A person who lost his righteous status, even with an army in his hands, was no longer to be feared. True Track was suddenly enlightened, he immediately understood everything and laughed happily. He praised Li Thien Nguyen without reservation. Old Li, you are brilliant. This plan is truly killing two birds with one stone. Not only will you kill Du Da, but you will also make Du Da bear the infamy. When it comes to cunning, no one can compare to you. Li Thien Nguyen stepped forward and patted True Track's shoulder. He also said something, but what I said just now is only the ideal situation. The final outcome still depends on fate. True Track didn't understand why Li Thien Nguyen said this. Old Li. What do you mean by that? I think the plan is perfect. What else could go wrong? Li Thien Nguyen didn't want to talk about what he was thinking. He didn't beat around the bush anymore and directly turned around and waved goodbye. I just came to say hello to Lord True. Excuse me, I have to leave now. As soon as he walked outside, Li Thien Nguyen's heart felt as bright as the moon. The only thing he couldn't control in the whole plan was his majesty. According to Li Thien Nguyen's previous calculations, a Chu and a Sa hated Du family to the bone, tonight in the Can Nguyen Palace, they would act according to the situation and take advantage of the chaos to attack His Majesty. However, Li Thien Nguyen still couldn't let go of his worries, although they were smart and agile, were they really His Majesty's opponents in terms of scheming? Li Thien Nguyen's figure gradually sank into the darkness, and so did his heavy heart, he hoped that this was just his own paranoia. In the Can Nguyen Palace, the cosplay harem, a source of constant annoyance for Du Da, had finally gathered, countless beauties, adorned in various intricate costumes, filled the room. 
The atmosphere buzzed with introductions. Some women exchanged pleasantries like close sisters, while others engaged in subtle competition. My sister, looking stunning tonight, blushed as compliments flew around. Even if I dressed better, she teased, I wouldn't surpass you. Your charm would still attract the king's attention. He might even summon you tonight. Legend painted the harem as an age-old battlefield where women of nobility fought for power. The facade of sisterhood couldn't mask the simmering ambition within each heart. Each woman desired to be the most captivating, resorting to sly remarks and subtle digs at their rivals. Those gaudy outfits won't win you the king's favor, one scoffed, looking cute and naive won't suffice, your revealing dresses are a miscalculation, tonight, I hold the winning card. Amidst the scheming, a sudden commotion drew everyone's attention, the Konve, leader Kiyu usually adorned in ostentatious attire, had chosen to blend in tonight. Her dark, utilitarian clothing contrasted sharply with the vibrant costumes around her, and the jingling anklets accompanying her every step added a peculiar sensuality that some found distasteful. Kiyu scanned the room, her gaze lingering on each woman. What's wrong with them, she muttered, sensing a hidden tension. They clearly lack martial arts training, yet, I feel a chilling presence, a murderous intent. The cold stares from the harem made even the proud Kiyu frown. This was truly a terrifying place. Two women whispered nearby. Who is she? She's dressed so provocatively. I've never seen her before. Is she some palace maid trying to change her fate? Kiyu stood there frozen, listening to their every word. Another woman approached her and sneered. Little sister, your outfit is quite creative, but without power or backing in the harem, you're nothing. The others joined in with laughter. Kiyu, the leader of the guards, had spent her life on the battlefield. She had never heard such insults before, she trembled with anger, but she knew she couldn't jeopardize the mission, she had to stay calm and focus on the target. At that moment, a guard announced, His Majesty has arrived. Du Da, dressed in his usual shorts, entered with a chu and a saw, he waved and greeted everyone cheerfully, blowing kisses and saying, I love you all. The harem, which had been filled with chatter just moments ago, was now silent. All eyes were on Du Da and the women began to scream, oh no, I can't take it, your majesty, I love you too, I want to bear your child. Duda looked around and noticed a new face. His gaze landed on Kiyu, who stood in the middle of the crowd, her stats were impressive, martial arts, 41, defiance 80, charm 85, conquest 85, courage 93, scheming 65. Kiyu, leader of the Kone Ve, former guard of the late emperor Du Thien Quan, skilled in ambushes, theft, and assassination, loyal to Prince Du Tu, plotting to kill Du Da to help Du to ascend to the throne. Kiyu realized that Du Da was looking at her, was he interested in her? Without hesitation, she drew her dagger and lunged at him, shouting, die, tyrant. Du Da took off his sunglasses and widened his eyes at Kiyu's sudden actions, she charged forward, shouting, tyrant, die. A Chu and a saw on the side immediately shouted loudly, you are so bold. How dare you speak such treasonous words in front of his majesty? Then a saw suddenly realized, could this be the essence of cosplay? Recalling the Can Nguyen Palace five days ago, Duda gathered everyone and announced, my concubines, I have decided to hold a cosplay banquet in the harem in five days. In ancient times, no one knew what the word cosplay meant. A woman in the crowd asked, your majesty, this concubine is ignorant. What is a cosplay party? Duda had already anticipated this question, he happily took out a Lolita dress and showed it to them, cosplay is playing a character, at that time, you just need to wear the most beautiful costumes and play different characters to have fun with me, he he he. At that time, everyone looked at each other, but no one dared to ask again. Now, a Chu and a Sa shouted in unison, the essence of, cosplay, lies in the excitement and stimulation of the character you play, right? Kiyu got very close to Duda and shouted, I'm here to stab you. Duda pretended to scream, don't. Seeing Duda's reaction, everyone thought it was just a stimulating game. They started to grit their teeth and curse. That woman is playing an assassin. This kind of character is full of danger and can easily arouse the conquering nature of men. She is really scheming. Kiyu suddenly realized that someone was rushing towards her. She looked over with cold eyes. A woman rushed up to her and said, but if I have discovered you, I will not let you succeed, your majesty. This concubine will catch this assassin for you. Kiyu grabbed the woman's hand with one hand and threw her away. 
After dealing with one person, Kiyu couldn't help but widen her eyes and think, is this woman crazy? She clearly doesn't have any cultivation. The remaining women saw the other woman fall but still thought, is this what it means to play a character? Dozens of women rushed forward like a flood, fighting for the spotlight, I can't let her steal the show. A bunch of people surrounded her, making it impossible for her to approach Duda anymore. Do you want to use this evil pagan way to attract your majesty's attention? There is no way. Does this little girl understand the rules? Did you fight first? Did you ask for our opinion or not? In this harem, we have to rely on hierarchy. People take turns next. The girls also took on the role of bodyguards and shouted. Let's protect and capture this assassin. Don't let her get close to your majesty. If you want to kill your majesty, you have to step over my body first. Kiyu was pulled further and further away. She was extremely indignant. Looking at that guy still standing peacefully in the distance. Her heart was extremely disgusted. This insatiable and promiscuous guy. This group of harem concubines. I'm willing to volunteer to protect him. What's so good about him? But since you're here. If it's your choice. I won't show you mercy anymore. Duda was extremely scared at that time. The warning siren was constantly ringing in his head. This was not good. These concubines were my guarantee to play the role of the king. They were important human resources in the mission of defeating the country. Right at the moment the knife in her hand was about to stab a certain woman. Duda spoke up. Stopped, and released those women. Kiyu stopped and looked at that guy over there. This guy not only didn't take the opportunity to run away but also stopped him, which also had some courage. The other women all looked at Duda with affectionate eyes. Your majesty faced the assassin for us. So touching, I am not afraid of death. As long as I can make your majesty remember my name. That's enough. Then, Kiyu looked at Duda and said. The condition. Oh you want to die for them. As long as you use your life in exchange for theirs. I will happily kill a few less people. Duda secretly calculated that it wouldn't work. He couldn't die before using up all his accumulated national power points. Otherwise the mission to destroy the country would fail. After a moment of careful thought, the nightman calmly said, Sorry, it's not time for me to die now. Kiyu clenched his fists and replied, Sure enough, he was only good at talking. Duda slowly stepped forward and said, But I can negotiate by abdicating the throne for Dutu, isn't the purpose of your coming to visit me to help Dutu ascend the throne. Kiyu felt like she was afraid for the first time, her eyes widened in disbelief what, her identity, and even her purpose, he knew everything, could this be a trap? Kiyu lost her patience and stared at Duda, asking him without any respect, what is your purpose, what are you up to? Duda smirked, then burst out laughing and said casually, let's flip the cards, I won't pretend anymore. He slowly sat down on the ground and continued, my purpose, to be a lazy and incompetent emperor, how can a throne be better than the beauties in the harem? If I have no talent for governing the country and no desire to be an emperor, I might as well abdicate to someone more capable. The group of beautiful concubines were stunned and couldn't believe Duda's words. At this moment, the bracelet Dai Bon on his arm vibrated and a system notification appeared. Host's behavior has suddenly triggered the national destruction event, Tran Kiyu's mistake again. A long string of text appeared, describing the history of Duda's original world, in that world. Tru Kuang Duan was originally a general with a powerful army in the later Chu dynasty. Later, Tran Kiyu launched a mutiny and forced Emperor Sai Tong Huan of Chu to abdicate, which was known as the Tran Kiyu Mutiny. The bracelet's explanation continued. Conditions for Tran Kiyu's mistake Aga to occur. 1. There must be a general with a powerful army outside the capital. 2. The host must be threatened and forced to abdicate to the general. If the abdication is successful, the event will be considered completed, and 1,000 national power points will be deducted from the host. Duda frowned and read through the system notification. He had made the right bet this time. He originally only wanted to keep the harem, but he didn't expect to trigger a national destruction event. After deducting 1,000 points, his national power points would be depleted. Kiyu was still standing in the distance, looking at Duda. She saw him sitting motionless for a long time, and she was still wondering if he was telling the truth. Could there really be someone in this world who doesn't crave power? This must be a trick, she couldn't be fooled. Kiyu waited no longer and spoke up strongly, leaving Duda no way out. Forget it. Whether it's true or not, you have to abdicate to Prince Duda anyway. I'll kill you and let him ascend the throne. Duda opened and closed his eyes, looking at Kiyu with a puzzled heart. 
Why did she still want to kill him? He had to increase the intensity of his deception. Duda thought that his previous words were not convincing enough. So he had to add more weight. Killing me now will only make Du to bear the name of a tyrant. Even if he becomes emperor, it will be unjustified. I am doing this for your beloved crown prince. This move was indeed very effective. Kiyu's eyes almost filled with tears, and she looked at Duda without the same viciousness anymore. Duda. Kiyu recalled the words that the late emperor, whom she respected, had once told her, Kiyu, I built the Ken dynasty and pacified the war in the north. Do you think I am a good emperor? Kiyu bowed her head respectfully and replied, Your majesty is both a civil and military genius, decisive and ruthless. You are considered a wise ruler through the ages. The late emperor looked at the distant sky with a heavy heart. It's a pity that my talent is only suitable for winning the world in times of chaos. The Ken dynasty may not need an emperor like me in the future. Kiyu raised her head without hesitation and answered very quickly, as if it was from the bottom of her heart. No, the Ken dynasty will always need an emperor like your majesty. The late emperor suddenly turned around and looked at Kiyu with a serious expression. No, I know my days are numbered, but this may not be a good thing for the Kan dynasty. He turned his head again and looked at the sky, at the country that he had fought for all his life. Now I only hope that the successor, even if he is not as talented as me, or even lazy and absurd, can be tolerant, not fight, and not be greedy for immediate benefits. He did not hesitate to express his innermost thoughts in front of Kiyu, his trusted guard, at that time, I naturally thought that the successor the late emperor was talking about was Prince Dutu. Kiyu suddenly stopped her reminiscence, a thought suddenly appeared in her mind. Now that she thought about it, Duda's laziness, absurdity, tolerance, and lack of fighting spirit were very much in line with the late emperor's vision, but the next second, she dismissed the thought herself, no, that wouldn't do. She strongly disagreed. Crown Prince Dutu was the eldest son of the late emperor and the heir to the great Khan dynasty. How could she let Duda's few words waver her? Putting aside her thoughts, Kiyu angrily took a step towards Duda. She decided to subdue him first and then take him to Prince Dutu. When she reached Duda, she said, In that case, I'll have to trouble you to take a trip to Lam Hong City in the northern prefecture to complete the abdication ceremony in front of Prince Dutu. Who knew that Duda, who was smiling foolishly on the outside, was also extremely happy and excited inside. This was great. He just needed to see Dutu and complete the abdication ceremony. Just as Duda was about to stand up, a voice called out, Wait. Asa stepped forward and blocked Duda's path, saying fiercely, You want to threaten his highness, have you asked the talisman in my hand? Duda was stunned and exclaimed, Asa. Asa held up several talismans and stepped forward with a powerful aura. Seeing this scene, Kiyu felt a sense of resentment in her heart, she had been careless. There was a master of magic by his side. She was still too naive. Everything he had just said about the crown prince was just to deceive her and buy time. Thinking of this, Kiyu felt extremely angry. She unconsciously clenched the dagger in her hand. This tyrant was really good at playing with people's hearts. In Kiyu's eyes at the moment, Duda was like a demon hiding behind a saw, looking at her with a smug smile. But in reality, Duda was looking at a saw standing in front of him with confusion. He didn't understand what was going on. Before Duda could calm down, a Chu put his hand on Duda's shoulder from behind. Your Majesty, don't worry. Asa's strength is not low. Her strategy can match that assassin. With her protecting Your Majesty, the assassin will have no chance. Hearing this, Duda was secretly annoyed, who needed her protection. He didn't need them to do such unnecessary things. At this time, a Chu looked at Duda's face distorted with anger and thought to herself. It was really the right decision to let a saw act in time just now. Turning back to one night before Li Thien Nguyen brought a Chu and a saw into the palace, they had a tense conversation. At that time, Li Thien Nguyen asked, Do you know what your mission is after entering the palace and approaching Du Da? A Chu's eyes turned cold as she said, I know, it is to find an opportunity to kill the tyrant Du Da and avenge our families. Li Thien Nguyen laughed twice, ha ha. The blood feud of the Kan Hoang Tu Thien Emperor destroying your two families cannot be resolved by killing Du Da. Your final mission is to make the Great Khan Dynasty perish. Therefore, for now, you must make sure that Du Da survives. Asa was very confused after hearing this and looked at Li Thien Nguyen. Li Thien Nguyen's face remained expressionless as he continued. Du Da was originally the most stupid and incompetent prince. 
I previously supported him to ascend the throne while Duta was leading the troops outside, precisely to change the dynasty of the Great Khan in his hands. Asa spoke loudly, You want us to stay by Duda's side, confuse and bewitch him, and make him become a king who loses his country. Only then did a smile appear on Li Thien Nguyen's face. Achu, you are indeed quick-witted, you understand with just a few words. However, what you just realized is only my initial plan. After Du Da ascended the throne, his actions became like those of a different person. His previous incompetence seemed to be fake, just to make me unable to see through him. Therefore, you must approach and observe him on my behalf and find his weaknesses. As he spoke, Li Thien Nguyen's eyes filled with anger, and his hands clenched unconsciously. Seeing this, A Chu felt fear and sighed in her heart. This was the first time she had seen this expression on Master Li's face, was he excited? Li Thien Nguyen looked at A Chu and instructed, A Chu, you are smart, you can act on your own by his side. A Sa is proficient in magic, although she has strong strength, her mind is simple. There is only one thing you need to remember, never let him and Duda stand on the same side. After hearing this, the two women understood what they had to do. While Du Da was watching the two of them fight with a worried expression, A Chu, who saw it from behind, had a different feeling. Master Li was indeed right. Du Da's incompetence was all an act. At this moment, ahead of them, Nhu Kiyu and Asa were constantly exchanging moves. Seeing this scene, A Chu guessed from afar. This time, he opened the harem for this peculiar costume party, the main purpose being to use this to make contact with Kone Vei, and then connect with Duda to deal with Master Li. Unfortunately, your plan has already been discovered by Master Li. As Duda fearfully called for everyone to stop, A Chu's eyes behind her were gleaming with satisfaction. At this moment, Duda felt something and turned to look at A Chu. A Chu, pretending innocence, looked away thinking to herself that she would soon be found out because she was too pleased with herself. Duda also blamed himself, almost forgetting that a Chu and a Sa were both under the control of Master Li. Li Thien Nguyen wanted to make himself a puppet, so those girls would certainly try to stop him from handing over the throne to Dutu. He must control a Sa's actions in order to successfully bring back Tran Kiyu unexpectedly. Suddenly, the system announced that a powerful army commander was outside and the host felt threatened and had to abdicate. If the abdication succeeded, it would be considered a completed task and deduct 1,000 points from the host's accumulated national power. While thinking, Duda's eyes lit up, almost forgetting Asa's weakness. Seeing Asa retreat from Nhu Kiyu's attack, Duda decisively walked up to hug Asa, holding her tightly with one hand around her waist. If she was touched by someone of the opposite gender in a sensitive area like her chin, her moral integrity would collapse. Duda lightly touched Asa's chin with his hand and said, I am the ruler, how can I let the woman I love take risks for me? Being touched by Duda, Asa's face gradually turned red, and then her eyes slowly lost consciousness. At this moment, Duda looked at Nhi Kiyu screaming to hurry up and seize him in this opportunity. Nhu Kiyu walked with a knife towards Duda, and upon hearing this, Duda was confused, not understanding what was happening, this must be the evil plan of tyrant. Under Nhu Kiyu's gaze, Duda seemed like a pervert beckoning continuously. What was there to hesitate for, it would be too late by the time the guards arrived. In Nhu Kiyu's heart, he thought, first ignore him, catch him first, then consider. Duda also looked at Nhu Kiyu with an expectant gaze. Then, Nhu Kiyu raised the knife to Duda's neck and Duda felt extremely relieved as his final purpose had been achieved. He released a saw onto the ground, but this action unintentionally triggered a saw's second hidden attribute. When touched by a man, she would fall into a state of collapse, viewing any other woman that the man touched as an enemy, leading to a loss of self-control. At this point, a saw was completely out of control, her aura erupting, Nhu Kiyu was also very surprised, as a saw, filled with anger in her eyes, looked at Nhu Kiyu and said, how dare you compete with me for a man. When Asa woke up from fainting, she was like a completely different person, resembling a fierce spirit, step by step walking towards Nhu Kiyu. Nhu Kiyu felt something was off. Why was this person so terrifying? She drew her sword out in front of her to defend herself. After activating her second weakness, Asa seemed to become extremely powerful. She immediately raised her hand to recite a spell. Using her specialty, she said, the fire of true samadhi, immediately, 
the talisman on her hand turned into a fire, spreading and gradually covering her entire arm. Then, Asa leapt up high, wanting to strike a powerful blow to defeat Nhu Kyu. Nhu Kyu was horrified when she saw this terrifying power, unable to avoid her. Seeing this, Duda also looked in shock towards Asa, and suddenly the urgent alarm sounded, announcing that if Nhu Kyu were killed, the plan to bring back Tran Kyu would completely fail. Upon hearing that her plan would fail, Duda quickly rushed towards Nhu Kyu, pushing her aside. Duda hugged Nhu Kyu to her chest, and they both jumped in one direction as Asa's attack struck down. Then a terrorist explosion occurred, and the entire palace was engulfed in flames. In the urgency, Duda inadvertently kissed Nhu Kyu, both of them shocked. Nhu Kyu, trained since childhood to be a strong warrior, had never experienced such a thing before. She was surprised and blushed as she shouted at Duda, just as she angrily wanted to kill Duda. Her head hit a stone on the ground, and she instantly fainted. In the midst of smoke and confusion, Achu saw this scene and was also shocked. Duda, still not grasping the current situation, received a notification from the system that the host's actions had caused the failure of the mission to bring back Tran Kyu and triggered the event. King Tan surrounds the pillars. History in this world showed that the assassin liked to assassinate the main official on the palace rooftop, but the main official evaded with his advanced movement skills. Then, with the help of a cold-hearted and indifferent doctor, who accidentally threw a medicine box on the assassin's head, the assassination completely failed. The system continued to activate a new mission, initiating the mission King Tan surrounds the pillars. 1. There is an assassin on the rooftop who wants to assassinate the host. 2. When the assassin has a third character who is proficient in medical skills present at the scene. 3. The third character with medical skills intervenes with the assassin. If the host defeats the assassin, the mission will be considered complete, and the host will receive 1,000 points of national power accumulation. Finally, Dai Bon left a emphasized message, congratulations, sent to Du Da. In his anger, Du Da clenched his teeth in frustration. Why did the assassination event turn into a messy situation, deducting points instead of adding more? The smoke gradually dissipated, and a Chu observed from behind and saw that Du Da was still standing strong without any damage while Nhu Kyu and Asa were completely unconscious. Seeing this scene, she could only open her eyes in amazement. The power was too strong. Both masters had fallen but he was unharmed. Mr. Lee, I am gradually beginning to understand your expression when mentioning this Duda's name. A little later, Nhu Kyu also began to gradually wake up. She opened her eyes and saw Duda standing in front of her. As a leader of assassins, Nhu Kyu quickly regained her composure and looked around, asking where she was. At this point, Duda cheerfully said, This is my place. Nhu Kyu noticed that her hands were tied, and she angrily scolded Duda as a lecherous and unscrupulous man. Before Duda could say anything, Nhu Kyu spoke up again, saying, Even if you have me, it's not enough. But before she could finish, Duda interrupted her, What are you thinking? Without me, you would have died at the hands of Li Thien Nguyen. Going back to the moment of the explosion, Li Thien Nguyen quickly rushed over with his guards. Upon arrival, he immediately ordered to capture the guests. He then knelt before Du Da, apologizing for the mistake of his subordinates that put the king in danger, pleading for forgiveness. Du Da waved his hand and said, It's okay, just a scare but no danger. Seeing his plan fail, Li Thien Nguyen remained calm and said, I will take the guest for further investigation to find out who was behind this. Du Da interrupted, you cannot take him away. He then turned to Nhu Kyu and said, this female guest is not bad, I want to sleep with her tonight. Li Thien Nguyen showed concern and hesitation, this guest was very dangerous, but keeping her might not be the best idea. Du Da looked at Li Thien Nguyen coldly and said, I like playing with guests, do you think I can't handle a woman who has lost her weapon and freedom? His intimidating words and demeanor made Li Thien Nguyen submissive, bowing down to Du Da's will. Du Da then picked up Nhu Kyu and left, instructing A Chu to take care of A Sa and ordered Tru Shu to follow him, while the others left immediately. In Du Da's mind, the failure of Tran Kyu's event did not mean the end. This guest still had value and he needed to rely on her to take him to Du Tu's place to continue his grand mission of nation conquering. The fearful look in Nhu Kyu's eyes as she saw Du Da's contemplative expression made her scream in fear, accusing him of wanting to harm her. 
She screamed in fear. You're getting too close. Want to kill or torture me? It's up to you. Don't come any closer, you perverted thief. Tyrant, you should kill me now. I have killed the messenger you sent to execute Prince Dutu. Sooner or later, you will be killed by Prince Dutu. At this time, Duda felt puzzled and asked, When did I order Duda to be executed? Nhu Kiyu still insisted, Don't act in front of me. Prince Dutu is the crown prince appointed by the late emperor. If you don't kill him, how can you sit on the throne with peace of mind? True Shu, who was listening behind, immediately understood. She knew that this matter had nothing to do with Duda, but was done by her foster father. At this time, Duda looked at True Shu, seeing her expression. He knew that she knew about this matter, without a doubt, it was the old man True Track who forged the imperial edict. But he could only go all the way and take the blame for this matter, making Duda hate him. Thinking of this, Duda laughed out loud, ha ha ha, I remember now, I was the one who issued the imperial edict. Hearing this, True Shu was extremely confused, she didn't know what Duda was planning to do and why he was taking the blame for this. At this moment, Duda took the sword, his words full of cruelty, after all, he held the heavy troops in his hands, which was probably the support left by his father. Now that I think about it, it's too boring to kill him with an imperial edict. I decided to change to a more interesting way to play with him slowly. Saying this, Duda slashed his sword at Nhu Kiyu. As Nhu Kiyu waited for death, she found that Duda had cut off the chains on her hands. After cutting off the chains, Duda slowly put away the sword, surprising Nhu Kiyu. She asked Duda why he didn't kill her. At this time, Duda became calm and said, you killed my messenger, so now you must represent me and pass on the imperial edict to Dutu. The emperor said that Dutu is a natural war god, in order to train him to ascend the throne and become king. He has been appointed as the king of the north, commanding the northern army. I feel that he is just a lumberjack and there is nothing to be afraid of. Today, I not only want to remove his position as the king of the north and the commander of the northern, but also want to take away his surname Du and demote him to a commoner. Nhu Kiyu was extremely shocked when she heard these words from Duda. At this time, Duda continued, the person who told him, if he is not satisfied with my decision, then he can try to raise an army and rebel to regain what belongs to him, I will wait for him in the capital. At this time, Duda wanted to create a character of a tyrant who was arrogant and jealous of his brother and didn't hesitate to seek death by provocation, he felt that his acting was excellent. At this time, the system reminded him that the host's behavior would trigger a level 2 national destruction event, the Jingnan Rebellion. Hearing the notification, Duda paused for a moment and asked in his heart, there is even a level 2 national destruction event, how is this different from the previous ordinary national destruction events? The system then began to explain, in the history of this world, Emperor Min Qin Van, Chu Don Nguyen, issued an edict to strip Yen Vong, the King of North, of his the Chu Kang Yen Vong. This led to the rebellion of Chung Kang. The Yen Vong army invaded Kim Lin, the capital of the Min dynasty at that time. Chu Don Nguyen as whereabouts were unknown, and his life and death were unknown. This is known as the Tin Nam Kai Dik campaign in history. Trigger Condition 1. The Northern Royal Prince holds heavy troops. Trigger Condition 2. The host is the emperor and issues an edict to strip the royal prince of his power. If Duta leads his troops to attack the capital, the second stage of the event will be considered complete, and the host will lose 10,000 national power points. Hearing this, Duda was overjoyed, as expected of a level 2 national destruction event. If both stages are completed, the national power value of Kan Dynasty will definitely be reduced to negative. Thinking of this, Duda couldn't help but laugh out of joy. Nhu Kiyu saw this scene and thought to herself, This tyrant is a little abnormal, well, that's good too. At least Prince Duda still has a chance to regain the throne. Welcome everyone to my channel. Here you will see a lot of interesting video retellings. I like to make videos for you and I am very happy that you like them. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel also click on the bell to not miss anything.